Hey everybody, we're back again with another video. Um, this one's going to be on the difference between, or the pros and cons, I should say, of the interlock kit versus the generator panel. In the last video I just did, we talked only about the interlock kit and you know really what it is, why it's a, a great, uh, great item to have or to install. Because I get a lot of customers that aren't aware of it, they're only aware of the generator panels. I just wanted to make sure I did a separate video on just the interlock kit. Um, but this one we're going to do on the pros and cons of the panel versus the interlock kit. So let's start with the panel um, that's pictured on your screen now. You can see it's mounted next to a pan an electrical panel. And the um, middle switches are the generator um, panel switches. Those have a three position. This is a really, really common, common panel. Um, and they have a, a generator setting, a off setting, and a line or a utility setting. So the way this works is it gets mounted next to your panel. As you can see, um, there's that metal whip that you can see to the left that ties into the electrical panel. That whip has um, a number of wires in it, and they're all labeled with the corresponding switches. You now tie those wires into the breakers that you want to intercept. And it's really that easy to just tie tying those wires in. Now, once um, you want to use your um, portable generator, what you would do is you would plug it into your into the outside of your house. And remember, always run your portable generators outside your house. I get a lot of customers that are asking, hey, can I run it in my garage? And no, definitely don't run it in your garage. Run it on the outside of your house somewhere uh, safe and away from the house, um, away from windows. You know, they make long generator cords, so there's no reason to have it next to your house. And if you have the space, you know, move it away from your house. Anyways, you would plug it into the back feed outlet on the outside of your house, um, then start up the generator. You'd go over to this panel that you see here and flick those middle switches from their um, line or utility setting up to the generator setting. Really that simple. And you're off and running and you're on, generator, on your portable generator power. That's all it takes. When the power comes back on and you want to get off of the portable generator power, you just repeat those steps. You could start with going right to the panel and flick the switches from their generator power right to utility power. Even with the generator running, there's no concern of the electricity mingling because the, the switches are three position. So really, really, really safe stuff. So you come down here, come back to your uh, panel, flick those switches back to utility. Now you can go outside, shut the generator off, unplug it, and you're, you're back on your utility power. So that's a quick rundown on what the generator panel is. Now we'll get into what the pros and cons of it are. All right, so the first uh, generator panel pro, and there's not a lot of pros, but the, uh, the first big one is uh, load management is really, really minimal on the customer side. The electrician that's installing it should be setting it up so it's only going to intercept the circuits that your portable generator can support. So you're not going to have a concern of overloading the generator. Um, you're going to pick your normal things like your, um, your heating system, given it's gas or oil, your um, fridge, your maybe a microwave, that might be important to you. Um, maybe you have a sump pump, a garage door opener, um, general lighting for sure, um, your gen some general outlet, maybe a master bedroom, maybe the kitchen. Um, so those are things to think about. So that's a big pro is load management is, is really, really, really minimal. Um, the electrician, like I said, installing it should set it up so that it should be foolproof. So that you start your generator, flick those switches, and you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Another pro is there shouldn't be an issue using a really, really small generator because, again, the electrician should size it properly. So let's say you got a, a teeny tiny generator because all you want to power is your fridge and your heating system. Well, in that generator panel, that's probably all you would you would just power those two things. And as long as the generator can support that, then all should be well. Really, really, really foolproof and allows you to run a very small generator. Which, if you don't have um, the money for a larger one, then that that works great. You can get a smaller one and at least get the critical things covered, like your heat and your fridge, which is that's usually what everybody's really, really concerned with. Now, one of the, let's talk about the generator uh, panel cons, which there's a number of them. If you add any new circuits, so let's say you installed a 6 or a 10 circuit generator panel and you used all 6 or 10 spots. Now, you add, let's say, a sump pump circuit to your, um, to your house and you want that to be powered on the generator panel. Well, guess what? All the spots are used. So now you're left with the decision. 
do I take a circuit out of that generator panel um, that, I, that was in there previously, like my microwave or something that's not that critical, I'll add the sump pump in there. So you're basically swapping that out. Or do I get a larger generator panel, which is you know, obviously not gonna wanna do that and pay for a whole nother setup and installation. So that's the big, one of the big cons is if you're adding a circuit, what do you, what do, you do if it's already maxed out? Um, another big con, and you know, probably the largest for most people, honestly, is the cost. The cost of a generator panel is gonna be a few hundred dollars, at least more than an interlock kit. So right there, just a material cost, you're gonna spend more money on the generator panel. And guess what? The generator panel is more difficult to install for an electrician. Now, think about it. You have those six to 10 circuits that have to get wired into that panel and all those intercepted. Uh, that takes some time. It takes a lot more time than installing an uh, interlock kit. So big cons is cost, cost of installation and material. All right, so now let's talk about the interlock kit and the pros and cons um, of it. So in the last video, I talked about the interlock kit um, and how it works. I'll reiterate that here really quickly. Really, really simple stuff. If you're looking at the uh, picture on your screen now, you'll see a metal device that's actually going around the main breaker and extends down to the generator back feed breaker. And all, all that does is it prevents you from having both the main breaker and your generator back feed breaker on at the same time. Really, really simple device. And that's all it does. It just prevents them from both being on at the same time. In the last video, I forgot to mention that if your panel does not have a main breaker, uh, that's, that's called an MLO or a main lug only panel, which is common if you're a service disconnect or your main is outside at the meter or somewhere else. Um, so if you do have that type of panel, you might be able to still add the main breaker to it. And uh, that's gonna depend on the panel brand, how old it is, does it accept the main breaker? And if it does, you could have an electrician install it and then you can still use the interlock kit. So not the end of the world. And the main breakers for a lot of panels aren't crazy money. You're still between the main breaker and interlock kit. You're going to be still less than a generator panel in the installation. Given the panel can support it, it's still going to be way, way less. So no concern there. So let's talk about the, the pros of the interlock kit. Total flexibility, powers the loads you want within reason and turn off the ones your generator can't support. Like I said in the last video, you're gonna have full control over your own panel, which I, which I love, honestly, I'm a big fan of that. You're not limited to, to a set six or 10 circuits, given your portable generator is, is big enough. You can power whatever circuits you want that that thing can support. So if you added that, like a, the example I gave before of the generator pa panel, excuse me, if you added that sump pump circuit and outlet, Guess what? You have an interlock kit, you can add it to that panel and you, it'll be in generator power when you turn the generator on and switch the interlock kit around. That's really, that's a beautiful thing. So no, no, no issue there with um, adding future loads. It's cheaper I mean, geez, that's, a, that's the biggest one here. And I, that was in the con of the, <laughs> the um, generator panel. It's a cheaper device to install. It's cheaper material wise. So big, big pro. Um, so again, big pros, you can manage your own loads, you're able to power more things at once, given your portable generator can support it, and it's cheaper. I mean, who doesn't love that? So you're getting, it's just better on all, all, um, all fronts. All right, and then let's talk about the interlock kit cons, because obviously there are cons to everything. The big con is, and this isn't a con for everybody, but for some people, you, you do have to manage the load yourself, like we talked about in the last video. You would have to, you'd have to know, hey, when I'm on generator power, my AC condenser can't run, my electric range, my electric dryer, most likely, you know, these heavy, heavy loads, I probably can't use unless my portable generator is really large. So what I recommend to all my customers, all of our customers is, when you're going to flick the interlock kit and um, put it into generator power, just turn those breakers off. It's really that easy. Go to the central air breaker, turn it off, turn off the electric range breaker. And then you don't have to worry if somebody comes over or somebody doesn't know that you're on portable generator power and they're trying to use those things. They won't be used. They can't be used and it won't trip out or overload the portable generator. So I'm a big fan. Just turn them off. I think that eliminates that con, but it is a con. You do have to manage the load a little bit more yourself. The next uh, con I would say is 
to use an interlock kit in reality, you probably really want to have a decent sized generator. I wouldn't get a thousand watt generator to use with an interlock kit because with such a small generator, what do you, you're only going to be able to power what you heat and maybe like a general lighting. I mean, that, that's it. So you're going to be turning like every circuit off in your, in your panel and leaving just two things or one thing on. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense to do unless you're planning on upgrading the portable generator down the road and this is just a first step, then that could make sense. So a con to me is you do need a better, more powerful generator. And like I said in the last video, I recommend a six to, th six to 7,000 watt running generator. Um, and if you can afford even a larger, you know, they have 10,000 watt ones, which are even, even better. But at a minimum, six to 7,000 watts is a, is a good starting point. And then uh, the last two cons, if you have an older panel, the interlock kit might not be available for it. Um, that is a possibility. Um, I haven't really run into that too often, but you know, very occasionally if the panel is really, really old or really odd, uh, interlock, there might not be an interlock kit available for it. So that, that's one um, more possibility. And I already mentioned this, but if your panel lacks a main breaker, one would need to be added to it, which is some additional cost, but the main breaker for most panels, plus the cost of the interlock kit, is going to be cheaper than the generator panel, given your panel can um, accept a main breaker. All right, and to wrap up, um, yeah, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of these interlock kits. I have one in my own house, and I always recommend customers and friends and family and whoever. If you're going with a portable generator, get the interlock kit, skip over the, the port, the generator panel unless for whatever reason your panel doesn't can't support an interlock kit uh, because it's old or whatever but if you can have the interlock kit go for it manage the load yourself it's really really simple stuff and it's a better long-term installation uh, for your house um, far far better and uh, more adaptable for the future too so big fan of that i'd say go that route um, also We'll do a video coming up on sizing the portable generator for your own house. I know that comes up a lot with our own customers. As how, you know, what, what size do I need? What generator should I get? You know, there's a lot of different options there. There's these dual fuel ones now, which, are, um, which I really, really love. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but in the meantime, definitely check out our website. Um, put the links below. See the, uh, check out the one about picking out the portable generator. Also, there's, uh, I'll put the link there to... Um, to an article I did on just this topic, the interlock kit versus the portable generator. So if you want to take a look at that and you know, read through it, or as a good reference if you're hiring an electrician and they're pushing you in one direction or another, you know this is great to have to um, compare what they're saying to what um, what you already know and uh, make the best decision for yourself. So I appreciate it, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next.